All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's rock and roll. We are going to be hanging out with the CEO and founder of Rainway today. Uh, We're going to be doing a podcast, introducing ourselves and hanging out and being um, having some fun doing this podcast. Everything's kind of weird on my system today, but we will get it hanging out, rocking and rolling. I appreciate y'all for showing up and getting in. Um, here we go. We're going to have some fun with this as we roll. I uh, will see you all in a moment. I appreciate you guys for being with us. Here we go. We're just going to jump right on into the podcast here and we will be rocking and rolling. All right. All right. Here we go, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. How are we doing today? Appreciate y'all coming in and hanging out. We are hanging out with Andrew Sampson, the CEO and founder of Rainway. Uh, appreciate you coming in and hanging out with us today. And so um, we will start out with uh, relatively simple. Um, what is Rainway. 
on Netflix for games. We let you take all the games that you own from services like Steam or Origin or Uplay, and then you can play those games on your phone, uh, tablet, uh, MacBook. Like basically, if there's a screen and an internet connection, you can use Rainway to play your PC games anywhere. That is fantastic. Uh, so, um, how how did the idea for Rainway come about? Where did this come from? Uh, I was building a very boring, unsexy uh, software as a service company uh, where we would let you manage a network of computers from inside of your web browser. Um, and we found that everyone used that to just play video games. So we made this logical uh, next step to just focus on building out a way for people to play video games instantly inside of their web browser. And uh, three years on, we're basically on every platform now. Ooh, that's fantastic. I love it. <laughs> so, so uh, what is Rainway's mission statement? What, what, what is the plan with Rainway? So entertainment is there to improve people's quality of life. I mean, after all your basic needs, there's entertainment. And so for us, we want to use this technology that we've created to build amazing user experiences that allow people to engage with the entertainment and content, which is like their games, uh, more often and in the ways that they want to. Um, so like you shouldn't have this barrier where you pay $60 and then you can only play that game on one platform during certain parts of your day. Uh, we believe that games should be accessible at any point in your day, um, no matter which device that you're playing on. Our technology unlocks this for users and uh, we want to build a community around that so people can connect and play together. I love it. That sounds like some really good inspiration for uh, creating and designing Rainway as a whole. Yeah, I mean, like, we're, we're, we're fueled by the idea of what we can be um, and what we and the change that we're enacting today. I love it. All right. So how long has Rainway been around for? Uh, we officially founded it in late 2017, uh, moved the company out to Seattle in 2018, um, did a beta for a year. In 2019, we fully launched. And uh, so, like, yeah, we've been around for a couple of years now. It's actually kind of wild to say it out loud. <laughs> that's awesome so uh the the it's rainway has existed since 2017 when was the conception of the idea of rainway i would say it was probably um like the end of 2016 where that sort of light bulb went off of like why are we building this like SaaS company this is super boring i'm not passionate about this like i like games games are why i'm a programmer um so let's build out this gaming service and it was the best choice we've ever made right it's like uh Ironically, the the SaaS company has made more money than Rainway to date, but <laughs> at least Rainway's core. <laughs> right. Yes, <that's> true. <laughs> All, right. <clears throat> All right. So, what makes Rainway uh, more unique than the other services that could be similar to this? Like the one you just mentioned, SaaS, or what? I don't even know what it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there's like. Uh, you can think about cloud gaming and game streaming in three different tiers. You have uh, your top tier, which is going to be your Microsofts and your Amazons and your Googles with their services like xCloud, Stadia, whatever Amazon's building. Um, and all of those are aimed at sort of trying to be a Netflix for games. Stadia is not a Netflix for games, but like xCloud more or less like um, is that. And you don't have to own hardware and all you have to do is pay a subscription and you get access to content on demand. There's some limitations in, like, to those kinds of services. Um, but overall, only trillion dollar companies are going to be able to play on that field. Um, then we are, we operate on a different tier where we realize that the streaming component of gaming, like game streaming, isn't just limited to the cloud, right? Like consumer computers are powerful enough to drive these experiences, and the average home internet connection is strong enough to drive this sort of experience. So we target the you know hundreds of millions of PC gamers in the United States, the billions of PC gamers in China. And we say, you have a computer, that's basically your server. The average user is never within, like, you know, is usually within 30, 40 miles of their home. Now, like with the coronavirus, they're always in their home. Um, and we let people use their computer as a central place where all of their games are at, all that content's at. And then they can pick up their phone and all the games are there. They can just press a button and start playing right there on their phone. They don't have to do anything extra. Um, so what makes us really unique is just, like, sort of the the immediacy of like what we offer. You just tap a button, a game starts, and it just works. Um, you can just plug in any controller and it just works. We try to remove as much friction as possible. So where other services have paywalls or you need to know what an IP address is or you need to port forward or any of these other complicated stuff, 
we want our setup experience to be 30 seconds or less. Right. Yeah. Get in, get out and get on with what you're supposed to be doing. Right. Exactly. Which is playing your games. I like it. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, so, uh, what are some of the types of games that are great for rain rainway? What, what style, what type works best for rainway or is there one? Is it flawless with all? Is it, uh, you know, what sets the rainway games tempo? What, what's the best game for that? The way that the, the philosophy of how we design rainway is that it's not built for a certain genre of games. If you can't play everything on it, then the service is flawed. Um, so that's why I'm always happy to see that like the most played games on Rainway are competitive games. They're always like shooters or um, like M MMOs, the type of games where latency and, and input delay matters a lot. Those are the games that are played the most through Rainway. And that makes me really excited. Um, and then there are certain games that are just like incredibly fun to play on your phone because you've never been able to do that before. Um, and so being able to take like what it's usually an exclusively a PC game and play, play that from the comfort of like your tablet, that's just super eye-opening and then we have our tv apps coming out um this month and like now you're going to be able to take those pc games and sit down in front of your tv and like play like get this console like experience using nothing but like an apple tv um so we're unlocking Ooh. a lot of potential for gamers so so taking the pc out of the lab or studio or office and moving it basically to a tv in a living room with uh, an option to play with friends family or whatever you you can imagine that's freaking like cool that's exciting exactly. that is super right. exciting all right being on a long road trip and you know still being able to play from pubg pc yeah I, I, as a streamer, I think that's a really exciting thing right there, it, especially when you talk about the high latency games and still being able to play them remotely on the phone with accuracy is hugely exciting because I could take a simple laptop, have everything else at home and set up a simple stream through a laptop and just record what's happening on the phone, have my uh, controller hooked up to the phone or a tablet and be able to do what I do on the road is, is a fantastic thing. Yeah, I mean, like, I'll put it like this. Uh, our TV apps need to be tested. So last weekend, I did exactly that. I beat Doom Eternal on the Apple TV app. So it's like on Ultra Nightmare. Um, so it's Whoa. like... Solid, bro. That, that is the amount of confidence that I have in my product. Um, and that is like, I want everyone to like have that same sort of experience. Oh, oh my. That is exciting. You also have to be good at Doom, <laughs> so I guess that's in, like a caveat there. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm pretty bad at Doom. <laughs> 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 all right so since since it's uh obvious that you play games and you enjoy them doom on nightmare you said is insane i already know i've been playing doom since the first one came out like it's insane how difficult the the difficulties are on that game you got to move so much but with all that being said what are some of your favorite games uh what do you, you like or your genre i literally have them attached to my body uh so <laughs> Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts, I'm looking down at my arm to remind myself. Kingdom Hearts, uh, Nier Automata, I love that game. Um, I have like a mule from the game tattooed on my forearm. Uh, I really love Arma. I don't know why. It's not the funnest game. It's super boring, but somehow I have 5,000 hours in it. Um, yeah, I think I think I love like I think I love games where I'm able to crack them open and like and play around uh, with like how they work, and so that that's super fun for me. My favorite all tie game that no one has ever heard of is this obscure PS2 game from 2005 called Area 51. I have like an obsession with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, <laughs> what 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 gives you the obsession? What 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 makes that game? like the game the bee's knees what's what what settles that for you it's a it's a subpar game so it's not like it's not like it was made by midway austin um it has a very corny plot uh overall it's, it's like it's, it is it is a mediocre game but it is the first game that i ever played on my playstation 2 on multiplayer and i have so many fond memories of just like staying up all night like so I, I remember these memories of like a guy teaching me how to like lead my shots with the sniper rifle to compensate for latency um and then i had these other memories of just like waking up after an all-nighter and reaching down and grabbing the controller and like starting all over again like those things are super fun for me and so like i had this opportunity uh two or three years ago where i the game was completely broken on pc and i really wanted to play it so like i just wrote the patches to make it work 
Um, and I shared it thinking everybody would love it. No one cared. <laughs> <laughs> there was no community support after. <laughs> there, there, there was no community support. I think that game died off pretty, pretty much as soon as it came out. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. There's but that's really cool that like... you patched your own. You, you fixed it yourself. Like that's really cool to have the ability and the knowledge to create that. Yeah, uh, you. I learned from the best. Man. Oh, so uh, we already discussed. All right, so. Do what, like, what platform do you favor the most? Like it, PlayStation, Xbox, PC? Oh, it's PC. It's like oh, I, have a, I, have a, I have a supercomputer in my bedroom. <laughs> like I have tied in RTXs and SL on it. Uh, all PC always have been. Um, there was a while there where I like, liked console gaming, I guess. I, I liked Halo. That's why I had my 360. I still like Halo. But now that it's on PC, um, I don't need to touch hmm. my Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's awesome. I will say I have a PS4 Pro. Only bought it for the nostalgia factor of playing Kingdom Hearts on a PlayStation. <laughs> Interesting, because it originally came out for the PS2, right? The Kingdom yeah, Hearts original. Yeah. So I've, I, when I saw it was coming out on Xbox and PlayStation, I was like, I gotta buy a PlayStation. There's no way I can like get the same sort of nostalgia on an Xbox. Right. <laughs> it's it's not the same at all. <laughs> I, I I haven't beat the game. Like I I, I just ran out of time. <laughs> I've got a few of those. I've got to go back and finish someday. <laughs> uh, I have a binder full that I still got to finish. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what what type of games would you consider? Or I I uh, we've read that uh, you have a passion for reverse engineering PS2 games. Can you elaborate on what that means? Yeah. So, like, sort of speaking to the Area Fifty One thing, it's like. Um, PS2 games are from this really unique era of game design where the engines like had to like they were getting a lot out of like a, a fairly weak GPU and so a lot of the design techniques are super impressive. I think the PS1 is even more impressive with um, some of the things that they did. But for the PS2, I've always just like had a love for the aesthetic of it um, and the engineering that went into like making some really amazing games on the PlayStation. So for me, um, taking those games apart. And like the games I enjoyed in my childhood and learning how they operate, how they function and how they made magic happen, um, sort of pulling back the curtain for myself is just a, it's just a fun thing to do in my spare time. And either I end up like writing a full patch for a game and like making it work again, uh, or I uh, just like stop halfway through it because it's like too complicated and I can't figure it out. Right. Totally understand that. Um, so I would like to walk through uh, your social medias before we move on to the next uh, part of this, which is download how to download and where to find all the information. Um, sure. So I'm uh, going to go ahead and share my uh, screen here. Get this opened up. Get this closed down. And we will start over here with the uh, Rainway Facebook. Um, so... Uh, Quick question, who manages all of your social medias and what do, uh, what what does that entail as we are yeah. going through this? Uh, so Laura is the one that runs our social right now. Uh, that entails like a lot of content creation, hammering out run sheets, uh, uh, pitching me ideas and then like having me like nitpick them. So, so it's so hard to work with me, so sorry. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but like they do an incredible job. Like they've managed to take the Rainway um, brand, where like I used to run the Twitter was not a good time back then. Uh, but now they have it sort of like on this like healthy cadence of like great content coming out, and the community really loves it. And I love to see it. Right on, I love it. So, uh, what what kind of content would people expect to find on your um, Rainway Facebook? Uh, yeah, so a lot of like what you see is like like showing the product in action. A lot of memes, uh, like as of late, jokes like people that have made videos in the community um, that sort of like joke about Rainway and like what it does, and then also like our own jokes. I don't know if you saw our April Fool's one, but it was pretty funny. We announced Rainway for the Ouya. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so like we, we like the thing is is like we're a startup, right? We're we're only fifteen people, so it's not we're not a big corporate brand, and we don't have you know like months worth of content like pre pre-allocated with no way to like 
uh, diverge from it. It's like, yeah, we do things on the fly because like our company is so young and we, you know, we're a little like immature um, on our social feeds. Right. Well, I think it's uh, mildly important to not because the fluidity of the industry that we're all in, um, it's kind of important to have that uh, fluidness to be able to reach out to your people at a moment's notice with fresh information, with new ways to use the gear or the tech or, you know, uh, sharing updates. I, I like the way that style of content creation, um, especially yeah, as it pertains to this. They're doing a great job. So your Facebook looks really nice. Um, it shows a lot of people uh, playing uh, the systems in different ways, propping it up, how they did it. There's some um, tech questions answered, gifts. Uh, I'm really digging it. Uh, so we can go into your Instagram here. Yeah, um, it's, it's sort of the same content. We uh, mirror the content across all the different channels so that like, no matter where you want to engage with it, uh, you get to see it. Right. I really like it, though. It, uh, it's really clean. Um, looks nice and crisp. Got a lot of some different content. I see more of your memes here. Um, and, you know, you guys got your, your events posted, what, what's happening and a very active growing community. It's awesome to see. Yeah. I don't even know how Instagram works. So this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this is uh, really exciting to see this a plethora of content, constantly updated, cool pictures. Hey, look, there's Mr. Andrew there himself. Let's like that. Post. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, this here, we'll jump into the Rainway Twitter real quick. So uh, this is this is my favorite place. This is I used your to jam, be, I, huh? I, I I used to be of this sort of like kind of this cloth where I'm like, oh, I don't like social media. Social media is kind of boring. But then like slowly over the last like two years, I've just become addicted to Twitter. <laughs> right. Well, your Twitter following is quite large. It's a uh, great looking uh, system here. Everything being retweeted. You guys look like you're very engaged and involved in your community. And that's one thing I really have enjoyed about the uh, fluidity and working with Rainway is the simplicity all the way through um, between your staff, uh, bet between setting this meeting up and working together. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. So this here is your guys' Rainway Discord where people can come in. You have an off-topic section, section. You got clips for the community to share them using the, you guys' information, uh, gaming tech. You have a general chat, bugs and feedback on the product. So, you, you know, Andrew's in here. You can see him right there. Bam. Uh, you know, there's tons Absolutely of things. Lovely. There's Miss Lauren there. Um, you know, uh, very active with the announcements, you know, up to date information, things going on. Um, you have a whole support tab specifically for support, um, you know, a very awesome, vibrant, growing community. And uh, it's very exciting to see where this is going. Yeah. You want to see the homepage? Yes, sir. Here we go. We are on the homepage. So walk us through your baby here. Yeah, so I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, like we can save all the scrolling. Like, I, like Rainway is all about simplicity, right? From so, from the moment that you land on Rainway.com, we want your entire onboarding experience to just be seamless. So, if you click download now, um, okay. now you click on download the dashboard, the top button up there. Download dashboard. Yep. All right, Bootstrapper, pulling it up. You just you just run that, and it's gonna install Rainway for you instantly. We've got Rainway on its way being downloaded, ladies and gentlemen, live for you here. And my computer was powerful enough to do it, apparently. Wonderful. So she's downloading. I love it. Here we go. Um, and so while we're doing that, I can turn my other camera on. Maybe. Yeah. It's there it is. And we can uh, download it on my cell phone while we wait for the PC to be finished downloading. Perfect. So um, I'm on an Android system. I'm opening up the Play Store now. I used to have your screen still showing, bro. My screen? Oh, uh, well, I have I have the PC down the PC downloading in the back, so I'm gonna. Well, if you want, if, if you well, the dashboard's done. If you want to go through that now, it's pretty yep. straightforward. Yep, uh, we're ready. I was just pulling up that, so we're ready for that when it happens. So just punch in an email. Yep. All right, email added. 
Now do a password and you'll, you're good to go. Uh, okay, password. Let's see if I typed it in. Almost done. Setting everything up. There's your games. Holy shit, that was easy. Look at that. Here's all of the stuff I already have downloaded on the PC. I don't even have to look for it. And it's all right here, ready to be launched in Rainway. Wow, that was fast yeah. and easy. Holy shit. That was now fantastic. Now all you got to do is on your phone, uh, open up the app, okay. and then you'll scan the code that you can, you press add device on your dashboard, scan that code on your phone, add then device. your phone's connected. Yeah. Oh my goodness, check that out. Okay, so I'm going to pull up my camera here, flip the screen around. QR code, read that. Tap here. Hi. Hey, I don't want it to cop. What? Oh, you gotta scan it through the Rainway app. <laughs> oh, through the Rainway app. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we gotta download the app. So let's yeah. go to Rainway right now. Uh, so it's just Rainway app or Rainway. Uh, yeah, just Rainway on the app. Uh, you have an iPhone or Android phone. Android. I found her. Mm -hmm. Rainway installing yeah. she's kicking it down and one thing i also will say and i really like about this right now what i'm doing and my experience with rainway at the moment is none of these files are huge there it's yeah. not large it's not like it's gonna bury, bog your system down on your phone or on your pc that's fantastic S super duper easy too so it just comes up with scan qr code as soon as you pop open the Rainway app, it is downloaded that fast. Scan the QR code, connecting to Rainway, and bam, it's already set up, ladies and gentlemen. Right there, ready to go. That was fucking simple. That was easy. For real, for real. Like, I could probably launch a game right now. If I wasn't streaming, I totally would. So <laughs> that that is, in a nutshell, it, right? That's it. Like it's that straightforward. And now, like if you want to play a game, just watch it. You like to plug in a controller on Android. You use a mouse keyboard. Like we literally have you covered. If you want to play a certain way, it will just work. That was fantastic. Stupid simple. Um, so, wow. Uh, I'm mind blown at how easy that was. Uh, even as somebody that sees a lot of tech, engages with a lot of tech, uses a lot of tech, that was simple. That was fantastic. Thank you. Uh, for Thanks. doing that for us. Um, Shout out to my <laughs> great engineering team for helping bring that. Like, I always like to like dream up this seamless user experience, but they're the ones that actually make it happen. Right. Uh, do you want to give anybody by name shout out or just the team as a whole? <laughs> the team as a whole. We're one. We're one organization. <laughs> I love it, dude. That's that's the best, you know. And that's what I feel is everybody's on the same sheet of music. Everybody's under the same understanding, and the communication between all of you is fantastic. I'm loving it yeah <laughs> so uh, i think uh, this is a great opportunity to talk about uh dark lord santa and his experience using rainway where he's used it what he used it for when he used it and how it worked for him all right so immediately after me and laura and the rest of the rainway crew at pax i immediately downloaded it on my phone and like you know what i'll just show i'll just show it on the camera like i I got it right here. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. So it may not show, but yeah, I have I had it on my phone like a uh, packs. So as soon as soon as packs uh, ended, and you know I got home, I got home about eleven thirty at night. I'm like, you know what? I'm already about to, I'm about to try this out right now. I'm gonna see how it, I'm gonna. I see how it works on their equipment, but you know I had a at the time I had a crappier PC. I'm gonna see I'm gonna see how it works right there. So I, down, I got it downloaded and, you know, immediately hooked up my Elite controller to it. I'm like, all right, I want to play some uh, some uh, PUBG because I am like, I I am a PUBG streamer. That is, that's been my number one thing since I started streaming two years, like, almost two years ago. And so, and, you know, playing PUBG, you know, you have to, you, it has to have, you know, it, that split second reaction. If you, if you can't like, react on a moment's notice, you're gonna die immediately. So, all right, when I and me playing it, all right, I'm not gonna lie, I'm I'm pretty bad on PC, <laughs> and without using mouse and keyboard. But 
it was like it was <coughs> a no delay. Like if there was any delay, it was so minute you couldn't even tell. It, it's like you were just sitting right there in front of a in front of your PC just playing it. Like now, like when I'm at work and I have any downtime, so like needless to say, I work an hour away from home. I so I so, need I, I love gaming because I work twelve like twelve to fourteen hours a day. So I need some time to take. I need some something to you know pass that time away. So I go I'm, I go out to my car. You know I got a controller in there, got my phone in there. I just you know put my phone right on the dash and I'll be playing some PUBG. I'll be playing some um, some or rivals. I'll be playing anything I want that's on my PC on my PC. And I have a ton of games because you know we, we as streamers we have to have a bunch of games. And so like when I'm on 24 hour duty, I'll be playing because I. I, I can't take my PC because trying to take all these, like, all the peripherals, all the like, the hardware, it's gonna, it's gonna bog me down. So I I, I love this app. I that, I can't. That, that means a lot to hear. I mean, like that is exactly the sort of stuff that I wanted to build this app for. Like to give people like yourself the ability to play um, and engage with that content that means so much to you. Um, it, br- it literally brings a tear to my eye. I'm kind of, <laughs> it's a very I'm very happy right now. Thank you. I love to Thank hear you. that. That it, it means you, you're very passionate about your product and what you, what you're creating, and that it's being used in fantastic ways. And and that's why we wanted to do this podcast is because the the applications, the possibilities, the understanding, watching this product be used in a place like Pack East with all those people around, all the internet being used everywhere. You guys' PCs aren't even there, and the way the booth was set up, and your staff, the way everybody works together, it just. It, this is an exciting thing yeah and it's like as, like any company we have our growing pains and like this, these these trials that we have to go through to learn like you know what we want to be how do we operate what makes us really efficient but like we're i feel so incredibly humbled and lucky to be able to build this idea to have people support me in the building of this idea um and like both work at my company and like help me build this amazing product together uh to support us financially through investment and to really just believe in like the idea of what Brainway can be and believe in myself and my team. Like uh, every day I remind myself, no matter how hard it is, no matter like how, like sometimes I feel like, Oh, well I, today's a day. Like I, I'm going to finally quit. Right. Like this is so hard. <laughs> um, and like, I remind myself how lucky I am to like be able to experience any of this whatsoever. And it's a humbling experience. Yep. As yeah. a, as a live streamer, I totally feel that. Yeah. All right. So Andrew, I, right. As a streamer, how do you think we can actually use Rainway? So, like, uh, are we able to use Rainway with our like with any program on our PC, uh, like include like OBS and Streamlabs OBS? Yeah, so we've been thinking about this a lot, and I think that for us, Rainway is successful because of people like yourself who you know support us and like talk to your community about us. But to do that better, we need to give you ways to engage with your community. Um, and so some of the ways that we're thinking about doing that is like we have our party feature that we're building, um, and that's literally going to allow you to invite members of your community to come play games with you that are one may not even have multiplayer, right? So if you want to play a game like uh, Cap- Marvel versus Capcom, like the old one, like using an emulator. You could invite your community to come play that game with you. Um, you could invite people to come play Overcooked with you. Like the, basically, there are limitless options, um, and so we're like thinking about creating tools like that for streamers, um, so that you can have better engagement with your community overall. Um, and we're always looking for feedback as well. Do you well. guys have so any questions that, uh, um, for Rainway during the viewing of this? Please ask in the comment section, like it. and right. we will like so ask at the and end also, during the Q and A. I have my, I have a degree in computer science. Um, how would you, um, like, what advice would you have those looking to break, also break into the industry, like, you know, creating apps, uh, even like doing, like, finding a job or creating a pro, uh, a company, like, that can do something like this? Yeah, so this is always a difficult question for me, because it's like, I took such an unconventional route to get to where I am, it's like, dropped out of high school, uh, like, never, like, always worked at in tech, like, from the get-go, like, built, always built my own stuff. Um, so I would say to anyone that's sort of in a position where you're in school now, you're sort of thinking what you want to do after that schooling ends. Um, like I would say stay one and get the degree. The computer science degree is going to like teach you a lot of fundamental computer programming that like I don't even have because like I skipped out on that more academic approach to going about it and learning. And it gives you a lot. It gives you a better ability to think about problems in a more abstract way, even more so than programming already is. Um, and those things are going to be incredibly useful to you if you want to build a business. And I say the first, like, 
the stupidest idea could become a great business or even just like a great product. It's like one of my most popular apps ever was a MySQL, like was literally a, a, a Git request that triggered a MySQL random select um, on a database and it gave you back a random Netflix movie, right? That got me a job uh, that, that introduced me to like one of my greatest, like one of my most favorite people on the face of the planet was a colleague that I still work with to this day. Um, and it set me on the path to like build. Um, so if you ever think about building something, no matter like how silly, like it sounds to everyone else, like build it. Cause you never know what part of what you build or if that thing that you're building can go on to become something great. Um, and always like, and always build for like solving a problem for yourself first. I know like it goes counter to what everyone else says is what you should look for a problem in the market. And then you should try to build for that. But like, I find that when I build to solve a problem that I'm having for myself, like that's usually something that tens of thousands of other people are also actually suffering from. Um, and those are the products that are most successful for me, but that's anecdotal. Uh, and you should always like use data to make decisions. As a streamer, that, that actually holds really true for our, our industry as well. Uh, we have to create, we have to uh, do new things or find workarounds. And so coaching and things like that are going to become a big part of our future, uh, potentially. But it's very interesting to hear uh, that your problem solving led to Rainway's kind of creation. And that's kind of the answer you have behind that. Yeah, and it's like, I love looking at Rainway and seeing the parts of other, like, what I would call failed projects that ended up in Rainway and solving a problem inside of, like, this company. Um, so it's like everything that you do, uh, anything that you invest time in is going to teach you something. Um, whether the value of that, like, it's never going to be immediate. It could take years to realize that what you did three years ago was actually worth something. Right. Uh, so that also comes through as a streamer and competitive gamer. Um, right. So all of the time we spend growing, practicing, learning our gaming so that when we went streaming and it takes us, you know, 18 months, two years to get to where we are uh, to have the confidence to sit down with somebody like this and do the interview. So it, it all ties into itself. All that experience adds up to being able to be successful at whatever you want to do. And it's not a failure unless you quit trying. So you know trying something new because it didn't work is a great way to be innovative and to create new technologies i love it i mean as cliche as it sounds i respect people that failed more than people that didn't try at all right exactly because if you don't if you don't try you'll never know if you're you'll never see success or failure like and if you yeah. know with those failures you you learn from them to make something better or you know or create something new yeah and those lessons are like I can't impart any words of wisdom on anyone, but like these are lessons that are true basically in any uh, facet of our lives. And so like uh, take what you can and like do, do your best. Right. I love it. So, so what is the future of rain lane? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I could say it's like, build a billion dollar business or like become the next huge gaming company. But I think it's about becoming the most convenient option for people to play their video games. I mean, for us, like success is not measured uh, in the amount of dollars that we generate or the, even the number of users, but it, it is measured in, did we make it easier for an individual and, or a group of people um, to play and connect and enjoy something together? Um, and so for us, like, if in the next five years, if tens of millions of people are using our service and at that point, a platform um, to grow their communities, to help build their own, like to help build their video games, to connect and play with their friends, and even maybe even to like get their content that they're creating in front of more people, um, that is the value that I see us creating and helping grow every facet of the gaming community from the content creators, uh, both on the game development side and like the, the streaming side or the YouTube side, uh, down to like the users themselves. I want to help gaming become stronger and more connected. Um, and so I think we're well on our way to doing that now. I love it. I know you, we, uh, you talked about putting a Rainway on the Apple TV. So what is the most unusual thing that you've actually put Rainway on? Oof. Uh, <laughs> this is a fun question. What is the most unusual thing I've gotten Rainway running on? Well, I would say not unusual. Like, the one way people would not think to use Rainway. 
I got it running on a refrigerator. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, I, I think I think the most I think not the most unusual, but, but sort of the most like orgasmic <clears throat> moment was getting it working on Tesla. Like when I got that running, I was just sort of like, "This is bueno, good job." So you've oh. ran Rainway in a Tesla. <laughs> oh yeah, you can do it right now if you have. Like you just go to the, anyone that owns a Tesla, uh, which I was actually pleasantly sur- I was shockingly surprised to find out a ton of our users own Teslas. <laughs> Interesting. Um, you can use r- open up the Rainway web app for your Tesla and it works. That's amazing. Right. That's really cool. So if chat, if you want to buy me a Tesla, <laughs> I yeah. can play Rainway. I can I can be streaming while I'm parked at work in a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be more ergonomic. Yeah, I mean, we want to make Rainway. We, the way that we design Rainway be able to run on everything and so there's a reason that we're able to get on so many platforms so quickly versus like when you look at the the rest of the space was just is that we design code and technology that is easy to deploy everywhere um here i will give one shout out like props to my engineer lynn for porting uh a, basically a brand new ui framework to apple tv when no one else had not even google did it uh props to you huge shout out <laughs> let's go lynn that's yeah. amazing. So what are some of the different ways Rainway can be used? I'm sorry, what was that? What are some of the different ways that Rainway can be used? Like to, diff, from different technologies that it can be put onto to different apps it can run or different ways to possibly use Rainway? Yeah, so today you can use Rainway right inside. So if you want to open up Chrome on your Mac, your Mac or Windows or Linux desktop, you can play any PC game on that. Um, you, you'll be able to play it on your TV soon using the TV apps. We had the Xbox app come out temporarily. Um, we're working on getting, we're working with Microsoft to get that back up soon. So you'll be able to play PC games on your Xbox One. Um, and yeah, I mean, like I said, we're really about being able to run anywhere without any sort of limitations. So we're always designing Rainway and trying to improve it so that you know if you have some wild idea of like where you want to run it, you'll have the ability to do that. I was in your guys' Discord and I seen that uh, some people are using Rainway. And we talked about it for a little bit too. Uh, it was uh, to, to chat or hang out. How does that aspect work? How, how does yeah. uh, that's That's a very different way to use it versus to play in a game or watching some TV. Yeah, so we have a generic remote desktop mode where you can just see the desktop. And a lot of people have been using that for things like content creation around like music and uh, video editing, uh, even just like sometimes to watch Netflix. Uh, so someone at PAX told us a really amazing story about how they had come down uh, to PAX. They were staying with a friend. They wanted to introduce that friend to The Mandalorian, uh, but Disney Plus wasn't working on their Apple TV. So they used Rainway to stream The Mandalorian from his computer to his laptop um and then plugged it into hdmi so that they could like watch it well, wow yeah, that's that's innovative <laughs> that yeah so cool like wow the, the technology the technology allows people to do basically whatever they want so fig if you can figure out how to make it work it will you cut out self i said so if you can find a way to make it work it will yes that's fantastic. That's exciting because the so you said you have a remote viewing app part. Where yeah, so just in the settings, you just toggle remote desktop, and you'll get a, a option mm-hmm. inside of the app or on the web app uh, to just like start a session on your desktop rather than launching a game. Wow, that's fantastic. So it's sort so, of like Rainway. Rainway both gets to be. Uh, this sort of goes back to like you know you never know what you build that what might be valuable later. It's like only does Rainway let you play video games, but sort of like how our old idea of like what we pivoted from was just like remote administration. Rainway now has that feature too. Remote administration. So I'm thinking of like Discord, which we're in right now. I really like the company. I, I use their product a lot uh, for multiple reasons, mainly to podcast right now and stay connected with fans off stream. So we're in a call right now where we could share our screens, but Rainway has an actual remote access app. Part yeah, of so you, yeah, yeah, be able to interact and like drag things on and like, uh, like if you want to play. So that's what that's sort of what party is. It's like taking that kind of ability and then letting you play games together. So if I want to invite you to play Cuphead, uh, which doesn't have multiplayer, we can do that because Rainway has actual input. Oh, 
that's really cool. So there, it's basically just like having another controller plugged in just on a remote phone with exactly. a different controller. We basically want to make it feel like the couch co-op experience we all sort of grew up with. It's back and it's modern and it works for our daily lives as they are now, which is like we're always online, we're always connected, we're always on one of our screens. Uh, so we need a service and solution that lets us play our games with our friends that way. I love it. Yeah, so I do too. <clears throat> for, for one, like I, I, I learned about the Rainway remote uh, UI feature because I keep my computer locked most of the time. And I, when I access the Rainway app, I, even when I'm at work, it allows me to actually you know, log right back into it using their UI feature. So I, I love it. That helps a lot. So that way you're never locked out of those games and you can shut it back down when you're done. Correct. That makes a lot of sense. That's a really good innovative feature to keep you, your PC safe or you know, to not giving access to everybody when you're not there using it. Exactly. And we're always looking for ways to make Rainway better because that's why we're here. Especially when you like, like me, you got a little one-year-old who loves touching computers. <laughs> right. <laughs> So you've put Rainway on a ton of things. We talked about a couple of them, and I know a couple that haven't been mentioned yet. So um, I am curious again on what's the most unusual thing it's been on. I heard you put it on a little tiny toy in your office. Can you describe oh. that to me a little bit? Because I know I, the fridge is cool. The Apple TV is awesome. So what are some of the like strange places, right? I, I got it running on a karaoke machine, like a kid's karaoke machine. <laughs> That was that was that was kind of hilarious. Like seeing it on that screen and then like talking into the microphone and <laughs> it modulated. Yeah, it's uh that's the, like again, Rainway can run on anything if you can get it. <laughs> if you could get it to download. Yeah, if you can get it to download, you can get it installed. It'll probably run. It's like it's like it's there's that old adage of like can it like can you can it did it did it run Doom? Can it run Doom? And it's like we're the same. Our app can basically run on anything, just like Doom can. Right. That's really freaking cool. That is exciting. So um, what are some of the crazy things people have done? We've already kind of talked about that and covered that a little bit. Um, so what is the community uh, that they've shared with you that they that really stood out that was different that they used the product for that you did not think about? A couple of highlights for me is like one teacher in Florida used it to sort of set up a cloud gaming service for his class. Um, that was a really interesting approach. Like he would, he installed rain on a bunch of like, uh, I think it was like AWS servers. And then like his students were able to use those servers to play games in the computer lab. Um, and that was really, that was a really cool thing. We threw them a pizza party. Um, and then there was another user that it's not really crazy, more or less. It's, it's just sort of cute. He used it to have a date with his girlfriend um oh that's which cool. was his, uh, oh. so that that, 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 that that's sweet um and yeah i'm sure a lot of people have been using it for some like pretty interesting things um and i hope to see some more of that pop up when we actually introduce uh real cooperative features that sort of make it more seamless i like I mean, it i wish i would have known about this when i was like the four packs like when i was like i used to have to go to the field a lot and Man, you know how boring it is sitting in a, a tent for six hours because you already finished what you already finished what your mission is, and you just want a game. Like I, you got your phone, but what can you really do? You know, play some little mobile games. I ain't like some people bring bring like a, a controller out to play some mobile games, but if you want to play like some like uh, say PUBG, Apex, uh, even like I've even tried to play. Uh, uh, escape from Tarkov on this and even though it's really difficult because all the controls it, it works that game is hard to play on pc period yes <laughs> yes yes I, I, like, arma, already, Ar like arma doesn't even have that many key combinations right i've already lost uh like seven million uh seven million rules on <laughs> so i had a really cool innovative idea of how we I or we or others could use Rainway and it would be for fundraising events or getting uh, like sick children. I, I, I'm going to name drop uh, Jimmy Fund, Kenneth over there. I, I met them at Pack East too. Amazing group, an amazing company uh, and what they do for cancer research. So if we, I could see this being used with somebody like Jimmy Fund that has cancer patients that are in the hospital that can't game or may not be able to that we could send 
uh, iPads or whatever with uh, simple controllers to these places so that people can have these games in these hospitals without it costing an arm and a leg. Uh, and the yes. computers don't have to be there. We, it could be used for veterans and, and a group like Stack Up. Like This has so many potential awesome uses to not only helping people, but to take gaming into places where it may not have been able to be taken before. Yeah, so this is the idea of champion internally quite a bit. So accessibility is really, really important, not just the ability to like, <laughs> access and play the games, but I mean, the actual design of our product has to be done in such a way that people that have a limited range of motion or, you know, they can't use their arm or maybe they're blind, uh, they still need to be able to use our application. So we put a lot of thought into how we do that and how we give back to our community. Um, and so we've added things like screen reader, um, like features so that blind people can use the app. We have to, we have like a couple of blind users. Um, then we're also adding the, ability that's impressive. Navigate, we're also having, adding the ability to navigate the entire UI with a gamepad, even like a tablet so that if you are using something like a joystick in your wheelchair to like actually, uh, play games, uh, that will work with Rainway too. We're adding voice commands so that if you want to say, you know, Hey Google or Hey Siri, um, start the X game, it will do that. Um, because all of these things are really important to letting people play their games. And like, we've always seen our app as sort of something that allows that. Um, and then, yeah, we like spoke with like uh, folks at Child's Play and a couple of other nonprofits. And the idea of letting going into hospitals and then like free of charge providing, uh, you know, um, patients with cancer, you know, children with cancer, like an iPad and own, own a, like a dolly and a game pad um, and letting them play those like games and giving them basically an unlimited supply of games that we host ourselves um, right. and you letting Rain Rainway do that. Um, that's something I want to do. So it's like, if anyone's listening and like wants to be the first, like I have the servers, I have the funds, let's do it. I've got oh. some people to introduce you to my friend, just off the top <laughs> of my head. And that's why I wanted to bring it up while we were doing this, because I think it's a fantastic way that we can assist others in what we all love, which is the gaming aspect, which is part of why this was created in the first place. Everything else happened organically and it's awesome as well. But I have a vision of this, you know, uh, I, I, anybody could get behind this, right? And anybody can do this and, and gaming is for anybody. Like you said, you've had blind people use the app. That's freaking amazing. How does somebody that can't even see what's happening on a screen be able to engage with your information? And I think that's very innovative. And, and like you said, being able to put a joyce, you know, your gaming joystick on your chair with voice command activations, you know, I, this is cool. It's literally yeah. for anybody. Exactly. And gaming should be for everyone. And it shouldn't be any sort of limitations that we put on the product because we need to be there for you. Like the product at the end of the day isn't for me, isn't for like a, like a specific group of people. It's for every gamer to use how they want to. Right. Oh my. I'm... You got anything to add to that, buddy? Yo, okay. I said I'm loving this. The, hey, the, the more I yeah, the more I'm actually thinking about just getting rid of my console. <laughs> 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 because, you know, the reason I use console is because I, re originally I had a crappy PC. But now that I have a, a, a more high power PC and I'm actually able to play those games anywhere and everywhere. Hey, I don't need, I honestly don't need a console anymore. Yeah. So, ah, it's been fun. I might do a giveaway for it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, uh, we, we touched on it a little bit with your TV app. Um, I would like to touch on again and more in depth on some of the features and platforms you've been working on uh, that you're excited about seeing soon. Yeah, so for me, the, t the TV apps are the biggest thing. We've like redesigned the entire user interface to make it good for the big screen. We have these be this beautiful design that was done by our head of, um, and it, it, it just feels like, for me, like we built Rainway and like I've always loved the product, but like this one like implementation of it just makes up me feel like we're already a billion dollar company. Uh, and just the sense that like I sit down, I use the app, I'm like this feels like Netflix or this feels like. Uh, like any of these other major like media companies. Um, and I hope that that same sort of like feeling of awe and magic that is captured by the application that we've created uh, transitions over to like the users that get to discover it in the next couple of weeks. 
Um, and then for yeah, we have a we have a lot of stuff that we're working on. Some other platforms are coming to that are still top secret, uh, but we hope to have some announcements soon. I love it. Let's see. Oh. Make sure I'm fine. All right, we're about ready for Lauren to come join us. Um, so, uh, in your mind, what's the future look like for Rainway? Where, uh, what, what are you most excited about? You just said you're really excited about the TV apps. Do you have anything in the works or anything you're daydreaming about a fluttering thought that may be out there in the cloud that you haven't picked up and grabbed yet? Anything that, that you would like to see or any type of feedback you would like? I mean, yeah, feedback on the app is always important. So, like, anyone that downloads it and checks it out, like, we always appreciate you being candid so that we can build the best product. <laughs> um, in terms of, like, features that we're building, uh, like, the one thing that I'm really excited for that, that like, I don't, we don't have a definitive d date of when it's coming out is the ability to install games through Rainway. So, uh, that's you'll be able to open up your phone, see a list of all the games that you own, not just the ones that you have installed. So, like, if you're, you know, at work and you want to install Red Dead Redemption 2 on your PC, you can do that through the Rainway app. Um, and it gives you this like all-in-one like game management launcher on all your different screens, and then you can launch and play the game on your phone. So like that's something I'm super excited to get out to the public. It's just taking a little bit longer on the engineering side. Right. That, that's gonna that's gonna be great. Yeah. So, and, and for us, like we build features. Um, a lot of people try. I think I think there's a problem within a gaming is a lot of people build features that everyone else already built. And we like to look at what the market has already done, what other people have already built, and we just like to take it a step further um, because everything has to be just like seamless and painless. And uh, a lot of people, when they build, just don't reach that same level of quality. Right. Um, well, that's that's one thing that uh, keeps drawing me back is is the innovativeness, the thoughtfulness, the desire to continue to improve on what you already have and, and the organic nature in which that it's happening within the community and uh, outside of the community with people coming in and learning and being a part of uh, what you guys have going on. It's really interesting to watch. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, I think we're getting ready to have uh, Lauren join us for a moment. Uh, she should be popping into the call um, in just a second. Uh, moving into kind of the question and answer phase, final thoughts, moments, things that we may not have talked about. Oh, I, I guess I guess I'll, I'll reverse the script. What's your favorite games? Uh, I'm a shooter. Um, all of my favorite games are shooters. I started with. Uh, Call of Duty original. Um, hey, hi, Miss Lauren. Welcome into the call. Um, we just wanted to shout you out. I appreciate you jumping in with us and setting this all up with Andrew. Give you mad props for being at Pack East, having all this wonderful information, emailing back, being on point, and having all this set up. Uh, That's for me personally. Thank you for your time and energy and being a part of this. Uh, this is really exciting and very cool. Yeah, no, thanks for having us and uh, glad you've been chatting up with Andrew. It sounds like you guys had a really good conversation. So thank you for, for having us on and, and for letting us talk to your ears off. Yes. <laughs> all right. Thank y'all because, you know, it just be, uh, we, uh, we're all human. We all love video games. We all, but this is given a day. This allows us to actually get out there and actually do more. Well, what, what, what we already got, just like as Andrew's like, Y'all took the technology that was already there and improved it. Yeah. Like y'all, y'all given us the ability to improve our skills with the technology we have, even while we're not in front of it. Absolutely, and I think like Rainway is a super innovative product that I like. Andrew poured his heart and soul into, and we all have. And I think like there's just so many potential for the product and for the tool, and like it makes gaming more fun and more accessible and just more available. Which I feel like it should be. Right. Um. I love it. Uh, and we appreciate you. It was a lot of fun talking with you at PAX. You did an awesome job managing the booth, had great information, um, and hope to see you at another event. And yeah, uh, no, you so you're doing a great job. Uh, and uh, I know Andrew appreciates you. And I know Stark Lord Senna and I both really appreciate the opportunity yes. that you, you were a part of and, and editing and making sure that all of this was happening because we've created an hour content. So it's been yeah, fantastic. Yeah and I give all the props to Andrew. You're, you're really the superstar here. I, all I did was set it up. Well, it takes a whole team and you're a big part of his team. So 
I, I just go over the point that you're the super sub. <laughs> I, I can take no credit for it. I'm not the one who's in, who's been talking for the last hour, so I can't take any credit. <laughs> right. It's been an hour. See, you guys are great. You're like, damn, this is the time is going by. So, I love it. But I, I, did but you to answer your question? Go ahead. Uh, 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 to answer Andrew's question, my uh, I love um, first person shooters and I love RPGs. Like I uh, I started out with I like, when my first PC game was Guild Wars, and ever since then I've been you know playing Guild Wars two. I played WoW. Uh, like I'm now I'm expanding into uh, uh, Escape from Tarkov, and you know it's like I, I love shooters and I love RPGs. Love nice. it. Love it. Lauren, did, was there anything during the podcast while you were listening that you may not have heard or that you think you is cut out. cut out? Okay, I apologize. Uh, was there anything during the podcast that you think we may have missed or pertinent information that you think should be added? No, I think that was like extremely thorough, well done. I mean, I think that was great. I, I honestly thought it was awesome. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So uh, we can get into the question and answer phase uh, if you guys are interested or whatever we want to do here. Um, I have a couple questions on the post that uh, and compliments that have come up. So uh, one of them was, how do I turn the controller part off of my phone if I'm playing a game that is strictly mouse based? Uh, swipe in the screen from the left and tap, turn on touch controls. Awesome. So does that mean that there's a built-in mouse feature on the phone? Uh, you, can use with your the app? Fingers. you can use your fingers as a mouse um, on most devices. On Android, there is actual mouse. So if you want to plug in a mouse, it should work. Wow. That's impressive. Keyboard, key, keyboard as well. Yeah, that's really cool. I did not know that. Yeah, making... I was playing Civ the other day, actually, all on touch controls. So it worked great. That's impressive. Y'all are making me want to switch to Android. I'm I'm still an Apple fan all the way. Poor little fella. <laughs> so, so so the next the next iOS update will have keyboard support uh, and the Apple added basic support. So like that will kind of just work. All right. Uh, Legends of Dragoon is probably one of my favorite PS One games of all time. Since we talked about some retro games and your passion for the old school PlayStation games. That's a good taste. That's good taste. <laughs> um, I, was, I was incredibly disappointed uh, that you didn't get a, re a real remaster, but it's, it's a good game. Right. Uh, another person said, I love that it launches the program and that you don't have to have the game already running. And I think oh, yeah. that's a really cool feature because nothing has to be running on the PC. Like Dark Lord said, you can use the UI, you can come in, you can load in, log into your PC and then launch anything from the Rainway app without ever having to have anything already going on on the PC. We like to build our, we're more so now more than <coughs> used to building our product with this idea of no dependency. So you shouldn't need something else to use a feature of Rainway. Fantastic, I love it. Um, it's another person says, can't pin the app to the taskbar. Is that going to be an option in the future? Yes. I just, re I realized the question he's asking. Yeah, I can do, I could probably do that right now. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Where there was a simple bug and it, it done. Love it. It was beautiful. Um, I think. That covers all the questions I have that I can see at the moment. Um, awesome. Well, you guys can always follow uh, Discord as well if you guys want to, like, if you have questions later on from people, like, feel free to join our Discord. Our devs are on, the, on there. I'm on there. Happy to answer questions if more come in or hit us up on social. We love to answer everyone's questions. <laughs> I love it. Did you have any questions, Dark Lord? You're muted. Yep. All right, I had uh, one, but you did again. <laughs> <laughs> kids, are, kids are screaming in the background. It's all right. We understand. He's muted. All right, there you all go. Right, there we go. All right. So I had one. Question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think it was because it was. About it, you keep cutting out. Yeah. I don't know oh what's going God. on. All right, it's like. Right. 
Yeti Mike is horrible. <laughs> All right. Um, it was a question of uh, said. So basically, this allows you to uh, bring your PC gaming anywhere. And Laura answered that to him. And hey, saying you can play any of your PC games on iOS and Android. I, it was, you know, clear and concise, straight to the point. Hey, Fucking simple, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, there's not much else to it. The answer is yes. You can play your games anywhere. It just works. It should just work. It just works. Hey, magic. But... Just think of it as magic. Hey, Absolutely. Just, hey. It's and then, and, and, and if you want to pull back the curtain, of some of that magic. Our blog is full of lots of technical blogs about how we built. It. Uh, yeah, where also... where are the blogs? Uh, I would love to post it in the comment section because I didn't know there was blogs. People Rainway. love blogs. Rainway.com forward slash blog. Perfect. There we go. You can find yeah. it on Rainway.com. I'm gonna have to watch those. You know, being a being a programmer, I love watching how things are built. And. You know, especially when this app is P A P M L, uh, it's P F M, pure fucking magic. You, you know, <laughs> like, I gotta, hey, so for me, that, like, especially, I, I work, I, I work with, uh, this, <laughs> and you know, we call that P F M, P F M, and but this is even more magical than even, I didn't work with a. Love and it. And I'm hoping I'll, I'm hoping I'm not cutting out anymore. <laughs> not well, too bad. I'm glad I I'm glad I'm glad I could watch you guys. Look, this has been a lot of work and um it's been fun chatting. Yeah. Fantastic. Um I would like to keep you all on a call for a moment. We'll end the streams and then we'll 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 end our call after our streams are over, if possible. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, fam. I appreciate y'all very much. Had a blast streaming, talking with Andrew, Lauren, and Dark Lord Santa. This has been a fantastic podcast. Thank you all for tuning in, showing all the love and support to the stream, to the page, um, and to Rainway. Huge shout out to Canon. I appreciate y'all jumping in, showing love, support, putting in the blog comment. You guys are awesome. I had a fantastic time talking with Andrew. Samson, Lauren, and the Rainway team. Thank you all very much, and I'll see you all later. Peace.